Let's talk today about the four most popular task management tools that are out there for productivity. As you know, I absolutely love ClickUp and pretty much have it as my primary for everything. However, it's not really best suited for all tasks and all purposes, so I also use Notion and Trello. Now, I do want to mention Asana, which I did not have a positive experience with at all, um, so I don't use that in any capacity, but I did try for like a good year. Uh, so let's go through the other three because it's kind of to me like Adobe, InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop. Well, they're all kind of similar and you could in theory use any of those applications to do one single task. Like I could use um, Photoshop to create a logo or I could create one in Adobe InDesign, but it's really best to use Illustrator for that purposes. The same thing with creating a planner or ebook. I could definitely do that inside of Illustrator or Photoshop, but really the best tool for that job is Adobe InDesign. So I think the same is true when you compare the other three, which is Trello, uh, Notion, and ClickUp. So I'm gonna tell you the basic de definition of what each of them are and what they're best for, and then what I use them for in my day-to-day -day, uh, business. So. Let's get started. If you are just getting started with ClickUp, make sure to download my free ClickUp 101 guide. I will leave a link to that below. And let's get started with today. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Tuesday. All right, I usually always talk in slides, but today I thought we could use a ClickUp document together. So this is ClickUp. I usually am always in my spaces area because it's like my happy place and I can move all of my cards around or, or tasks or whatever you want to call them, just like Trello basically, but like, a Kanban board, um, but we're gonna go down here on the left to documents. Um, and once I click all, you're gonna see the document I created for today. If you wanna make a new document, you can add new, new doc that has all these different, you know, permissions settings, but since I'm a team of one, I'm not really worried. Plus I did 100% share this document with you. There is a link for it below. You do need ClickUp to open it, but ClickUp is free. So, and I think you're gonna love it as much as I love it. So anyways, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do three things. We're gonna cover what is ClickUp, what is Notion, Trello and Asana, because those are, are the ones that I use literally the most. Um, and then over here, part two, which one should you use? And then also part three, what to do next. So we, this has links in it, don't worry. And so you're gonna get access to all of this. All right, so part one, what is ClickUp? I think it's just like everything else. It's a task management tool, just like Monday, Asana, Trello, they all basically are created to do the exact same uh, primary tasks. They obviously do a ton of other things. I see people try to make them do things that honestly, I don't think they're very good for or really meant for, but they're like, I just love this tool so much. I'm just gonna make it do this other task that is totally unrelated. Um, anyways, so ClickUp, I like it mostly because it does a Google Calendar integration. So a lot of times I will put something in my calendar like, don't forget to call um, the dog sitter or whatever. And I will just put it that particular day, I need to remember to do it as an event. But with ClickUp, the more and more I use it, the less I, I bother doing that because I can actually put when a task starts and then when it's due. So that way I know when to work on it. The problem with a lot of the tasks inside of your Google Calendar integration is you never get a notification until the due date. And so if you're looking at your calendar, you're like, okay, well, it doesn't look like anything's due this week or I need to work anything. You have to like force yourself to go in and look at what tasks are coming up to estimate when you need to start on it. So this way I just put like, I'm like way ahead of time on like when I need to start it. And then I can see it in my calendar right away to start it and then I never miss my deadline. But that's just how I use it. It's also really great for team collaboration. I don't do that at all. You know, I have a separate video on click up for solopreneurs so you can just kind of manage yourself uh, but it's really it has a lot of things bells and whistles for collaboration as well as what i call employee supervision a lot of times you're like did you read that email like you can actually create a uh kanban column there that says red 
And then maybe the next column says started working on it. So then you actually don't have to communicate with your employees or your, um, I guess, people you outsource things to as much because you just think of all the questions that you would text them or ask them like, hey, how like how far along are you? You could just put a percentage in there that they can just update each day. Um, and I think that causes a lot of less friction between everybody. Now, I, in an ideal world, this would be prettier. And when I say prettier, I mean like artful agenda. I don't know if anyone remembers. I loved artful agenda um i even bought a subscription a almost said prescription subscription to them um and i tried it out for months and it a hundred percent never ever worked it was completely unreliable and it would freeze and it would have so many glitches and it was just nice because it actually integrated with your google calendar so even though it's pretty like a digital planner um it actually was functional so digital planners just so you know are pdfs they're just static pages no matter how gorgeous and beautiful they are they will never ever 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 communicate with google <laughs> so you won't get notifications you won't see it on your google calendar right so artful agenda was supposed to solve that problem while also giving you stickers to make it pretty and do other things however the only problem is it doesn't work so as great of a concept as it is i do not recommend doing that unless you're okay with never having a workable like planner. Um, now Notion, Notion is just like ClickUp, except it can do a thousand other things. Why? I don't know. They've just, that's how they've built it. So it can do databases. So I, I honestly think doing this is a waste of time. There's a girl who is like a ClickUp expert um, and she was talking about how to build a database in ClickUp, which again, you could do, but I don't know why you would bother. And she was like, I'm gonna do a database of the plants in my house, which I thought was kind of funny, like um, not like, she's dumb funny, like haha -ha funny, because I don't know what you would make a database of. It's like a lot of time wasting to make a database. So I have a minor in computer science. Making databases is painful and awful. I just don't know why anyone would want to make their own database. Now, having said that though, I do think it's useful for having wiki knowledge bases where you have tags. So you can look at things. Um, let me show you someone else's database. So this database right here, uh, these are all tags, clothing and accessories, Shopify themes, paid, thematic. So if I go here, I can look at all these by themes. I can look at it by features that it does. Um, I can also look at it by catalog size and I can look at it by store type. Um, so I do find that function useful. And sure, if you wanna call that a database, call it a database, but I just call it tagging um, so that you can filter things. Uh, websites, you know, you can do a your actual website. I think it's only like $8 extra per month. Notion is very inexpensive. Um, however, you know, again, like I said, I don't know why you would repurpose this to be your website builder, unless I guess you're super in love with it um, and the way it works, but uh, it's more like an intranet service to me, like those, um, employee intranets from the 90s, like SharePoint. Uh, and then client intake forms. I actually use that for client intake. I used to use Typeform, but the problem with Typeform is it works like a survey. And so you feel compelled to answer everything right away. Whereas I have things that are really long. So over here for a Shopify client, um, and this is obviously all blank because I can't show you any customer data, but they can put all of this information in and then for their goals, they can tell me all their goals for their Shopify site, um, what their users need to do when they're on their site. Um, they could tell me about their brand, what kind of design they want for their Shopify site, um, and all these other different questions. And obviously this is gonna take, these are a lot of questions. It's gonna take them quite a while to figure, fill out. And the way that Google Forms or Typeform works is it wants you to answer a question. It's very linear and then you go to the next one, and then you go to the next one. And there's no option in there really to save it at any point. So this is a actually a much better solution when you have a client intake that has extensive amounts of information like all of this. Um, so I really like it for that. Uh, now, the other thing too, you'll notice, <laughs> the biggest thing with Notion is it's, it's kind of just text only, right? So these over here, uh, this looks great because this has all of these tags are in different colors, but it's really just text. Um, if I go to my own Notion and I go to, I don't think I've ever created a Notion dashboard. These are actually others that have been shared with me. So over here, it's just text. So when you first open up Notion, it is literally blank. Um, so without, uh, and even when you add text, honestly, without adding this emoji, 
it's not as pretty, right? So over here, there's colors. Um, so unless you make it highlighted with colors, it's not as pretty. Like this document right here would just be black and white if I had not put these different sections in different colors. So to me, um, Notion is only made prettier with emojis. <laughs> uh, Trello. So Trello, I still use Trello because a lot of people still share things on using Trello and usually they're older documents, um, but it tried, um, really hard to make it more personalized so it was a prettier experience. Now, Trello, again, I still like it. And so here's my Trello board. Uh, you'll see it has images in here. The problem with Trello is, one, I felt compelled to decorate the background, which you have to pay an upgrade fee to get this background. And then every time uh, I had a different task, I felt compelled to put a picture in there because I needed to look at that picture. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I just found I was wasting inordinate amounts of time to make my Trello boards look pretty than actually doing the task. Um, and that's why I left it and went to ClickUp. Plus it wasn't as functional in terms of integrating with my Google Calendar, which honestly, if you're not that tied to your Google Calendar, maybe it won't make that much of a difference, but I like a thousand percent rely on that uh, to do anything or make it to client meetings or organize myself. Um, so to me, if you need that, like if you need to look at something pretty, which I totally get, right, I'm a designer, and that needs is something that motivates you or gets you like to spring into action, then keep using Trello. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think it just becomes a problem if you get too obsessed with like putting a new cover uh, on each one. So I think everyone recognizes when you go inside of here, it has a ton of things that you can do, but then you're like, oh, I don't care what's inside of here is the task. I just need to add a picture. And then you're gonna look for a picture that says um, pink desk. And then two things are gonna happen. I'm gonna keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling till I find one that I like. Um, and then I'll test it out and I'll see how it looks on there. And then maybe I'll change my mind that I don't think it looks as pretty as some of the other pictures or it doesn't match the other uh, images inside my board. So anyways, this, maybe it's just me specific cause I'm a, des a graphic designer, but I was just spending hours and hours doing that inside of Trello. Um, so, I, and honestly, I don't really see a lot of people using Trello anymore because it's just not as robust as ClickUp um, or even Notion. So Asana is the last one. I used Asana for like over a year. Um, Asana is just like Artful Agenda. It is completely unreliable, it is unstable, and it deleted a lot of my stuff. And I was, you can see here, hate it. I was so angry because every time I'd call into customer service and it just had come out, right? Like whenever I was using it five or six years ago and you know, they would be like, well, how do you know it just, it was deleted. I don't see it on here. He's like, did you take a screenshot with the timestamp? And I was like, no, I didn't take a screenshot with the timestamp, but I know for sure I entered it. And he's like, yeah, maybe you didn't hit save or you didn't do it right. Like, so he kept blaming it on me. And I say he, I don't remember who it was, whatever the customer service person was. And this went on over and over and over again. So finally, after, cause I had paid for Asana for a year, after the year was up, I just never went back. And so that's kind of how I feel about Asana. Um, and that's, that's that. So which one should you use? I actually use both too. So I think ClickUp is great for everybody, whether you're a team of one or you have a big team. It does integrate with HoneyBook. And I think the important part there is because there's some things on the back end that you need to do. And HoneyBook really only lets you program in what the client has to do or the client sees our client communications, which is still great. But you know, I there are some little tasks that sometimes I forget. Um, and you can send auto reminders to yourself, right? So I think this is really great, especially when I collaborate with others. You know, Courtney and I did the book club together for years and we always set everything up in ClickUp. So it would send her a reminder, you know, get me your titles, get me the book, uh, the bookmark, um, get me the data for this. And so that way, two things. One, I didn't feel like it was a burden to collaborate with somebody. And three, the reminders went out automatically. Neither of us had to think about it or worry like, oh, there, there were a lot of times I was like, I'm so sorry, I totally forgot to ask you for this and I need it in the next hour, right? And so then it causes like distress and like kind of anger between like everybody when that happens. And then with ClickUp, this makes it so it never happens. Um, it also helps me, like I said, my happy space is in there, that, that space is like moving things over on the Kanban board, Kanban board and that like 
that makes me feel like I'm like getting ahead in life or something. Um, so, you know, having said all that, it still does not do a great job of doing client intake. Now I've shown where you can use it as a form, but it's nowhere near as robust as notions um, for one being a knowledge base to clients. I've seen this a lot in classes where they leave a knowledge base for students. And Jessica always says that notion is kind of like uh, a bullet journal lover's dream, but I would actually take it a step further and say it's really for people who love MySpace. And the reason I say that is because bullet journals, you can just write whatever you want. You don't really need any skills or tech knowledge, whereas Notion has a huge learning curve when it comes to the tech side of things, especially with creating databases and making your website. So even just making a checkbox like you see over here, or making these columns, or making this a yellow background that spans the whole way, or making uh, any of these little items, because it's now like a database or something with the, once you add all of those items, or doing this layout, all of that takes a lot of time to see where I said, you need emojis. Without emojis, Notion is not pretty. <laughs> and so you need to just like, I wasted hours and hours looking up emojis to make something. And then even when I found emojis, they weren't the right size, or I had to learn how to resize them in Notion. So it is not easy um, or intuitive at all all to learn. Um, so that's why I say this, this is for people who like MySpace, who like to tinker with the tech to make what you see on the page look like what you drew. Um, and I do not. <laughs> the only reason I use it, like I said, is for that client intake form because it is so extremely long and Google Forms and Typeform just don't do a good job of like helping with that. Um, Trello. Again, if you love Pinterest visuals and that gets you motivated, I would use it. It's the only reason I say to use it. Um, or if you want to share a process with others, I still think like seeing a process shared, even though you can share a template from ClickUp, I've gotten a lot of ClickUp templates. Some of them are expensive, some of them are less expensive, and I've always been 100% disappointed. And the reason isn't because there's like bad information in there, it's because they're not pretty. And when you share a Trello board to a client, to a customer, to a student, they're like, oh, this is amazing. I can't believe how great this looks. Visuals are really, really important. Um, so anyways, I would still share things in with Trello uh, to anyone. And they're honestly, it's just more intuitive to understand. Like here's phase one, here's phase two, right? Like that's how this one's labeled, um, but it's, I think just way easier than trying to explain ClickUp or Trello or us, any of the other ones notion to somebody else. Asana, um, as you know, I think it's only great if you want to lose all of your data and waste your money. So I don't have anything nice to say about Asana. Um, part three, what to do next. So I would sign up for a ClickUp trial below try the pro version, go through my training for solopreneurs. It's a video on my YouTube channel. There's a workbook that goes with it. See if you like it. Um, you know, I love it, you know, um, and then download my ClickUp workbook. And then I would also sign up for a Notion account because I do believe that if you are going to do a course and you wanna share stuff or you have one-on-one -on -one client work and you wanna leave them with information that you can have in a database um, or you know tutorials, that is literally the easiest way to do it uh, without having to like over explain something to them. Because when you go in here to Notion, it does kind of just look like a static page um, of information. And I honestly think that's probably the best way to send text heavy uh, information to somebody or anything like these Shopify themes or these Shopify apps so that you can then um, have something they can easily filter uh, by things that they are searching for. So that is my suggestion on what to do. Now there is a guy, Frank Scott, Frank Thomas, uh, who is like all, I think Notion pays him to only 100% talk about Notion on his channel. And he has a ton of free Notion templates to get you started, which honestly, I don't think you can really get started with Notion unless you have a template. Like just looking at a blank page and trying to make all of those things is basically like making a website, which I think is not a good use of your time, especially for managing yourself. Um, so that's where I would start and all of those links are right inside of here. All right, I hope that was helpful in explaining like shop, like uh, not Shopify, uh, in explaining ClickUp versus Notion versus Trello versus Asana. And again, I still use all three of these um, because they all serve different purposes and they're still really all three great tools, but again, for different reasons and for different scenarios.
All right. I hope everyone's having a fabulous and wonderful and fantastic day. And I will talk to you later. Bye.